Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to talk about fire alarm. We're going to talk about devices and how to terminate them. We're going to make a few videos on fire alarm, how the panel operates, how they actually go together. But this video here, we're going to talk about our three different types of basic fire alarm and how they are terminated. We're going to discuss our notification devices or a horn strobe. We're going to talk about our pull stations, okay, the manual pull station. And we're going to talk about our typical four wire smoke detectors. Now, something you have to remember with fire alarm they are very polarity sensitive. So, when watching the video, please pay attention to where the positive and the negative are going. Something you need to know, especially if you're just getting into fire alarm, you've got to remember. And it's very simple, we probably should all know this anyway, but a lot of people don't. Red is always positive, black is always negative when it comes to fire alarm. If you're using a cable that has a red and a white in it, your red is still positive and then your white becomes your negative, okay? The white is not a neutral, so please try with fire alarm, try and get that out of your mind. We're just strictly talking about positive and negative. It's a DC circuit. We're going to start with installing a smoke detector with an end of the line resistor. So let's install a smoke detector. Very simple, just twist the base and remove it. This is the smoke head. Okay, this is what we primarily call a smoke head. This is what you see in every building that you work, you go into. Okay, this little unit in here, this little unit in here is what actually has the switch in it. So when it sees smoke or, you know, dust or debris, because remember, if you're working in an area and you're drilling, you're creating a lot of dust, if you got a smoke detector close by, it can set off the, the smoke detector. So keep that in mind. But the normally closed switch here, as soon as it starts to see the debris and it opens, well, now it breaks the circuit, the, the 4.7K resistor is not seen, triggers the alarm panel, sets off the notification device. I'm gonna show you how we actually make that happen, okay? All you need to understand is the smoke head pops into the smoke base, you wire the base, and your system is ready. Let me show you how to wire it. What you do is take your wire, your conductors, and you wanna strip the end. You're just taking the, the jacket off the, insul uh, off the insulated conductors. You can see I have two conductors with what we call in the field a drag line. And this drag line we take and we pull and we strip the cable back. Take our ends. Cut our wire off. Now rule of thumb of what I do is the end that I stripped off, the two inches, I just cut those off and make them nice and clean. Sometimes your strippers or your knife may cut, gouge some of the wires. You don't want to have any gouges or nicks in your wire. Is we are going to use a 4.7K resistor on our device. So what I like to do is run my wire through the base and install the device. When using the device, we're going to use these three here. You can see this one is a positive, a positive, and a negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this. We're going to take the wire. We're going to tuck part of it back into the box. We're going to strip our wires. We're going to take our resistor and we're going to fold one end over. 
We're actually going to fold them both over because we want to make sure we get a good connection with our resistor. We're going to take the black wire, we're going to put it on the negative, which is the third one in. We're going to slide our wire in, and we're also going to slide our resistor in. Now, there is no splicing in fire alarm. Now, when you're using the resistor, the resistor is the end of the line, okay? So if you had two cables coming in, which I'm going to show you on the pull station, you would not use a resistor on that. You're just going to use the typical splicing method that we use by stripping the wires and putting them under the screw. In a smoke detector um, or a pull station, any type of initiating device, you're going to have an end of the line resistor. It's the last device that's on your circuit. So by having that in place, this one here we're going to use because we're just doing a small demonstration. So we're going to use the end of the line resistor is going to go at the smoke detector. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the other end of the resistor and we're going to land it to one of the positive screws. As far as that's concerned the resistor is all set. Now we're going to take the red wire and we're going to put it on the other positive screw. Slide it in. Tighten it down. Now that is how you install a smoke detector that's an end of the line. The same concept goes for a pull station. We'll do more videos so that you can see different variations and how they operate. The smoke detector is now installed. To a pull station. Now let's install our pull station. Our pull station is very basic. It, it's just nothing but a switch. Okay? And it's normal and activated. Okay? So we want to make sure we put it in the normal state. Close the door. On the back, you can see we have two screws, and you can see the red and the black wire. We have the positive and the negative. These are very polarity sensitive. You have to make sure that you do not cross your wires. So let me show you how I splice these wires to here. We don't use a pigtail. We actually land the wires on the screw. I'm going to show you how to do that next. Okay, so now that I got my wire stripped, okay, I made them even. Now, if you were using a shielded cable, depending on the type of system that you re you're working with, okay, you would want to tape these. In this type of system with no shield, you don't have to tape them. But for me, I like to tape them just to keep them together and make a nice, neat installation. So take the wires, put them together. Put a couple wraps of tape around the end, give it a nice finished look. Pull it tight, and I'm good to go. Now what I'll do is I'll just tuck my wire in my box. Taking my wires, cutting off my end, I'm going to strip all four wires about a, about a three-eighths of an inch.
Okay. Remember what I said, we have positive and we have negative, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the positive first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my positives and put them on one side and my negatives on the other. I'm going to line my wires up together. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to split my screw on the positive side with the two wires. Just like so. And then I'm going to tighten them down. Now we'll take the black and do the same thing. Okay, once I know they're snug in there, I'm not going to come out and give them a little tug. I'm going to slide it back into the box, making sure nothing is touching, and I'm going to mount the pull station. So that's how we hook up our two initiating devices, our smoke detector and our um, pull station. Our pull station is manual. We actually have to physically pull that pull station for the alarm to go off. Our smoke detector, we're gonna wait for some smoke. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to install the notification device or the NAC. Um, the NAC also needs a 4.7K resistor because it's a supervised circuit, okay? One thing you gotta remember, both circuits are supervised. That's why we need the 4.7K resistor. Every fire alarm has a 4.7K resistor. Unlike uh, intrusion detection, where we could have different, uh, different resistor values you know, depending on manufacturer. Let me show you how to install the notification device. Okay, so we're gonna take care of this one and we're gonna strip the wire and get it prepped the same way. Okay, wire stripped. Now, installing notification device. There's a little screw here on the bottom for this style. Unscrew it, and you can take the base apart, okay? The actual horn strobe you can put to the side. The base is what we're gonna work with at this moment. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the resistor now that our base is mounted. look up here it says four wire strobe it's positive positive and negative okay that's what we're gonna follow so just like the last device we're gonna take the black wire and we're gonna take our 4.7 K resistor we're gonna fold them over and we're gonna install it the exact same way we did the sing the smoke detector So, take our resistor, stick it in like so. Give it a little crank and make it tight.
Okay, remember now we're going to take our positive and we're going to put it on one end and tighten it down. We're going to take our resistor and we're going to put it in on the other end. And that is how a notification device is installed. Now we take, now we take our cover, we clip it to the top, we bring it down, we take our screwdriver, and we tighten it up. Okay, so today we talked about our devices, we talked about initiating, we talked about notification. I showed you th two different styles that you're gonna use. If you're using multiple devices, you're gonna wire them like we did the pull station, and then at the end, you're gonna wire it like we did the smoke. You, same thing with notification devices. You're gonna wire them like we did the pull station, but then, like I showed you with the notifi uh, notification device, you're gonna also wire it that way at the end of the line. Notification devices and initiation devices do not go on the same circuit. They're separate, they're in the panel. In the next video, we're gonna talk about fire alarm uh, control units and how they're wired, and we're actually gonna watch these, these devices operate. I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, have a great day and be safe.